Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today, I would like to discuss the role of innate and acquired immunity in COVID-19 infection. I discussed the mechanism of COVID-19 infection in a previous video. For today's video, I want to focus on the type 2 pneumocyte. Here I have a type 2 pneumocyte with ACE2 on its surface. ACE2 is the receptor for the COVID-19 virus. Here I have a virus, and here the virus has attached to the receptor. Once it's attached, it can then enter the cell and release its RNA inside the cell. Once inside the cell, it can then use the cell's resources to make more viruses. These viruses can then leave the cell and go on to infect other cells or to go out through someone's nose or mouth into the environment and infect another person. A cell that has been infected with a virus will put out stress signals on its surface, like this. Now, this is how the infection has occurred, but you will notice this has given us numerous targets for an immune response. The targets include the viral RNA, the virus particles, the cell with virus on its surface, and the cell with the stress signal on its surface. Let's go on to discuss these in more detail. The immune response can be divided into innate and acquired immunity. Let's discuss innate immunity first. Innate immunity is a fast response so that the body can quickly respond to an invading virus. Here is the viral RNA. There are molecules called TLR7, TLR8, and Rig MDA5, which can recognize the viral RNA. These will then produce inflammatory reactions, which can produce TNF, interferon alpha, and interferon beta. This will have numerous effects, including preparing local tissues and the body to fight the viral infection. Next, we have our cell with the stress signal on the surface. Another innate immunologic reaction is mediated by the NK cell, which is a type of lymphocyte. The NK cell will recognize the stress signal and then can kill the infected pneumocyte. This can also produce interferon gamma and TNF alpha. This will increase cellular responses to infection. Next, Let's discuss the acquired immunologic reactions, which are slow and can take days in order to come into effect. The first one reacts against the cell that has the virus on the surface. A T cell is a type of lymphocyte that can recognize these viral antigens on a cell surface and then kill the cell. The virus particles may have antibodies produced by B cells, which bind to them. This again, of course, can take days to come into effect. Here on the right, I've shown the cell infected with virus. The antibody can, of course, bind this. Then a neutrophil can come along and kill the infected cell. Next, I want to discuss cytokine release syndrome, which is also called cytokine storm. Hospitalized patients with severe COVID-19 infection have numerous pro-inflammatory cytokines. These cytokines can cause a cytokine storm in which a patient can rapidly deteriorate due to the massive inflammatory response against the virus. There is a balance between innate and acquired immunity. Whether a person survives requires both of these types of immunity to be expressed at the correct level. Too much or too little response in either innate or acquired immunity can result in severe disease and death. The last thing I want to discuss is plasma transfusion. The antibodies which we just discussed as part of acquired immunity can be taken from a person who recovered from COVID-19 infection via a blood donation and then they can be given to a person who is acutely infected with COVID-19. These antibodies can help the sick person recover. 
I want to discuss the references I used for today's video. The first one is a paper which discusses specific immune responses of the COVID-19 virus. Middleton's Allergy Principles and Practice discusses innate and acquired immunity in great detail. I recommend you read chapters 1 and 11 if you would like to learn more about these types of immunologic responses. Okay, I hope everybody is staying healthy.